By the end of this lecture, learners will be able to define the main four schools of linguistics, describe the specific properties of each school, explain the distinct application of each approach to the study of language, identify the importance of studying the schools of linguistics. Hello everybody. And welcome to the Univ English channel. If you have not been here before, then, welcome to the Univ English channel. If you're interested in learning more about linguistics, then make sure to hit the subscribe button. And also smash the notification bell. To receive notifications of when I produce more videos like this, for more information, you are invited to visit my website, english.mokerma.com. So, let's begin with this question. What are the main schools of linguistics? Linguistics is the study of language as a universal and recognizable part of human behavior. It aims to analyze and describe language and how it is organized to meet human needs, in addition to its function. In the late 19th century, four linguistics schools emerged in Europe with different approaches to the study of language, structuralism, functionalism, generative grammar, and cognitive linguistics. Each school has its own distinct approach to the study of language. Structuralists believe that language can be analyzed in terms of its component parts, while functionalists focus on the role of language in communication. Generative grammarians aim to describe the rules that underlie all utterances, while cognitive linguists focus on the mental processes involved in language use. Functionalism Functionalism is a linguistic school that is concerned with the functions of language in society. It is interested in how language is used to communicate meaning and how it influences social interaction. Functionalists believe that language is a tool that humans use to interact with each other and that it plays an important role in shaping our social world. Functionalists have identified three main functions of language. 1. Communication 2. Control 3. Representation. 1. Communication. The primary function of language is to communicate information and ideas between people in order to achieve some kind of shared understanding. Functionalists emphasize that language is a means by which people communicate with each other. Language is not an end in itself, but rather a tool for getting from one point to another. Without the ability to communicate using language, human interaction would be very different. 2. Control, language is also a means of controlling the actions, feelings and behavior of others. How we use language can shape the behavior of others and the way they respond to us. If a person uses language to maintain distance between himself and others, he is likely to experience less social interaction. If a person uses language in a way that makes him seem like he fits in with the crowd, he is more likely to experience acceptance and approval from others. Language can be used to lead others, such as a parent or teacher who uses language to foster the learning of students. Language can also be used to manipulate others, such as when someone lies in order to get something they want. The words we use can also make us feel better or worse about ourselves. If someone calls you a loser or says you have failed, it will affect your self-image. 3. Representation Representation in linguistics refers to the way that spoken language is represented in the mind. With the advances in technology, communication has become more important than ever before. The ability to communicate effectively can be the difference between success and failure in many aspects of life. For example, the mentalists suggest that language is represented in the mind as a set of mental symbols. These symbols correspond to the sounds and meaning of words. Mentalists believe that these symbols are combined according to rules to create sentences. Accordingly, it is important to understand the different ways people communicate and how to best represent oneself in order to be successful. Structuralism In linguistics, structuralism is an approach that emphasizes the study of language as a system of rules and components. Structuralists believed that all languages have the same basic structure and that this structure is universal. They also believe that language is a tool for communication and that it can be studied scientifically. The term structuralism refers to a framework for the study of linguistics and other types of human behavior. 
Structuralists emphasize the role that language plays in shaping a person's perception of the world. Structuralists were interested in analyzing how languages are put together and how they work. They developed methods for analyzing languages, such as phonetics, phonology, and morphology. These methods are still used today by linguists all over the world. Ferdinand de Saussure is often credited as the father of structuralism. He argued that the meaning of a word is not derived from its relation to other words in a sentence, but rather from its position in the overall system of language. This system is composed of two parts, long and parole. Long refers to the abstract, underlying rules that govern a language, while parole refers to the actual usage of words individual utterances or speech acts. Saussure also argued that language is a system of signs, each with its own meaning, and that a word's meaning is not inherent in the word itself but rather in its relation to other words in the system. Generativism Generativism is a school of linguistic thought that emphasizes the role of grammar in language. Generative grammar is a type of grammar that describes how sentences are formed in a language. Noam Chomsky, a prominent linguist, developed the theory of generative grammar. According to Chomsky, there are two levels of representation in generative grammar, surface structure and deep structure. Surface structure is the level at which phonemes, sounds, are combined to form words, and deep structure is the level at which meaning is encoded. Generative grammarians seek to describe the rules that govern sentence formation in a language. The theory of generative grammar has been extended to cover non-sentence level phenomena, such as phonology, morphology and syntax. The generative approach has also been applied to second language acquisition, psycholinguistics and speech recognition. Chomsky's theories have had a profound influence on the study of language in general and speech recognition in particular. One of the main ideas in generative grammar is that the deep structure of a sentence is independent of its surface structure. In other words, an English speaker will understand a sentence such as John gave Mary a book independently of how it is phrased. This idea is called the principle of universal grammar. Universal grammar, in Chomsky's view, is an innate faculty of the human mind. This faculty enables humans to learn the language spoken around them and it also underlies the ability to acquire rules of syntax and use them correctly. The universal grammar faculty of the human mind represents a system of rules and principles that is common to all human languages. Chomsky's concept of universal grammar is not, however, a set of rules that specify the structure of all human languages. Chomsky holds that all human languages have the same underlying structure and that the ability of humans to learn the language is an expression of that underlying universal structure. Cognitivism Cognitivism is the linguistic school that emphasizes the mental processes involved in language use. Proponents of this approach argue that language is a tool for thinking and that understanding language requires understanding the mental processes that underlie it. One key area of research for cognitive linguists is how people learn new words. A recent study by cognitive linguist Ronald Lanica found that when people are first exposed to a new word, they tend to store it in their long-term memory as an isolated form with no meaning attached to it. Over time, however, they gradually develop a more sophisticated understanding of the word's meaning and how it fits into the larger context of the language. This research has implications for second language learners, who may benefit from being exposed to new words in multiple contexts over time, rather than trying to memorize them as isolated forms. Experimental evidence for the importance of context for multilingual children comes from a study by psychologist Lisa Fenn and her colleagues who found that children ages 3 to 5 had better memory for words when they were presented as part of a sentence than when they were heard in isolation. The children showed better memory for words when they heard them in a sentence with a high-frequency word, example I want to go to the store, as compared to a low-frequency word, example, I need to brush my teeth. Cognitivism starts from the assumption that language emerges from human cognitive processes. It is built on the belief that words have meanings that can be defined and understood by human beings. The view of language in cognitivism is the same as the one found in functionalism, 
but it differs in its explanation of how meaning is derived from a linguistic signs. It challenges universal grammar by suggesting that grammar is not something that all humans can inherently understand, but rather it is learned by using language. Conclusion The four linguistic schools have their own unique way of looking at language. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses. However, all four schools are important in the study of linguistics. Each school provides a different perspective on language, and without these perspectives, it is impossible to fully understand the complexity of language. <laughs>